Sometimes you said too much. Don't be squirreling everything away and never having any fun. Don't be crazy and spending all your money. I'm gonna be in Singapore, Malaysia and Bali. And on that trip, I was also kidnapped. 30 plus year old Patricia here, learning, thriving, growing, and wanting to teach some of you guys in your 20s some lessons so you don't make the same mistakes that I made. And trust me, in my 20s, I thought I was grown, grown. I thought I knew everything, but I definitely didn't. So I got some hacks today, some tips, some advice for those of you who are in your 20s and maybe in your early 30s, now that I'm in my mid 30s, long term relationship, got my ish together, and I'm still willing to be learning. So number one, mm, silence is your friend. I am naturally a chatterbox. I'm naturally someone who loves to tell everybody everything. I'm excited. I will meet new people and I will share and I will give my all to sometimes colleagues or new people that I meet. And a big lesson I've learned is not everybody is your friend, not everybody needs to know your business, and sometimes it is better to move in silence. For somebody who is naturally loves engaging, this has been something I've had to learn the hard way, where things I've mentioned or told people have then been used against me, or people I told about something that I was thinking about doing have then kind of superseded and gone and found certain things and then done it themselves and where people have twisted my words and so I've realized that learning to be a bit more quiet and being silent especially in circles that you're not that familiar with is an important skill to have learning what to say and to hold back on words is very important in your 20s it will stop you from some heartache. It will st stop you from maybe missed opportunities and also just stop you from embarrassment because sometimes you said too much. And if you are a drinker and then you start like, you know, letting your emotional guts like spill, no, calm down. Just think about having a physical tape over your lips and be quiet. And actually I was with a friend of mine who is in her early 20s and we were having a chat, right? And she was disclosing amazing things, great things. And I was like, and there was three of us all together. And I realized that another person was in the group having a discussion who didn't know her that well, whereas I know her a little bit more. My first thought is, I love everything you're telling me, but I actually want you to be quiet because I'm not sure about the other people in this space. And I thought of that as like a way of protecting her and being like, you don't, don't tell me everything, especially not right now. And sometimes when people are really excited and they're really joyful, they want to share, but mm, don't let that joy turn to tears because you gave away too much too soon. Move in silence. Learn to get comfortable with being at home and making your home feel homely. And there is a patois term, which is I'm staying in a yard. In a yard, I'm inside my house. You don't have to be outside all the time. And I think learning to cultivate being in your space is really important so you know how to make it serene and a, a place where you don't want to run away from, but a place that you are going to invest in for your growth. Learn to make your house a home. You don't need to be outside all the time because you are not comfortable with your space. When I was younger, well, to be fair, I lived at my parents' house, right? So that was stressful. Um, but I didn't know how to really cultivate my own space to work for me. Whereas now as a homebody, I love being in my space and I find that I'm able to be a higher version of myself because I spend a good amount of time in my home that I've made work for me and my needs. A lot of people find that they run away because maybe they don't have the technical equipment that they need, or maybe the sound system isn't right, or maybe their room is messy, or maybe it's small, but really they haven't learned to bring the things that they want in their space that's gonna allow their lives to function in a way that is fun and thriving. And I wanna give a shout out to Sky who are my sponsors because not only do I have the Sky Glass, which you guys know I'm obsessed with, but I also have Sky Live. And this is one of those things that is like an essential piece of tech that makes my home and my living room space feel even more homely. I'm able to watch, play, and interact.
this tool is amazing and ever since I've got it, I've spent even more time in my living room at home. I have conversations and video calls with my mum. We even watch shows together and I even have the opportunity to work out with a personal trainer from home. And even when I talk about making your house a home, it also means about making things easier to do at home. So even having a dedicated workout space at home versus always having to go to the gym or having to make a booking and then not being bothered by really cultivating a space that feels serene where you live and where you're at you are going to be in a better position with my sky live i do my working out as i mentioned my chats with my mom and sometimes i may even play a little game online as well so don't be one of those people in your 20s who is always outside because you don't know how to make your space work for you take some time get the tools the trinkets the things that you need might be a sky live and learn to make your space work for you Hacks to know in your 20s is to invest into relationships and really important relationships that target certain important areas of your life. It's important to have different groups of friends and networks for different reasons. So you may have your, your ravers, right? The people you're gonna go on your holiday jam with, you're gonna be doing all kinds of nonsense with, but you also need those people who can help you when it comes to career development, who can review your CV with you, who can practice your interview technique with you because that person might not be the same person who is Miss Tequila on the weekend, right? You may also need the friend who is the emotional and spiritual expert or guide or someone who's more grounded or focused on other things. And you may want the friend who also challenges you, but making an investment into those relationships in your 20s is gonna be really, really important. Because as you get older, it is really hard to make new friends, especially in such a digital world. And again, I've recognized that I am very lucky that I have maybe two to three really close friends who ride on that 20 years, they see in all the mess that nobody should have seen. But in the same breath, I've had to now really work on cultivating newer relationships, which has been very difficult, like with mums or with mentors and with individuals who can bring a different dynamic to my world perspective and my world view. So if you are in your 20s, try to make sure that you're building your circle outside of just the people that you went to school or college with or who live in your local area. Because when it comes to like trying to do something big, for yourself in the future or understanding the world as a whole your network may be too small and a point around that is that friendships require you to put effort in it's give give take take give give take take they're not just once in a while to be fair you're good friends it could be once every six months you have a three-hour chat whatever works for you you have to cultivate how you build those relationships but they are an investment they're an investment of time energy and um, respect and I think as well, if you're not getting energy back, maybe those relationships are not the right ones for you, but cultivating relationships, friendships, and networks in your 20s is very important because it's hard to make new friends when you're a bit older. Developing a skincare routine in your 20s is so, so real. I feel like you guys know about your AHAs, your BHAs, your acids, exfoliation, sunscreen, and just having that on lock, but one million million percent ensuring that you have a good foundation for a great skincare routine is gonna be important for your 20s if you wanna keep looking amazing. Because I've really seen people who look more haggard in their 30s than they should look and all they needed was moisturizer. Like hydration never hurt anybody. And I think that those who actually maintain their skincare routine at an earlier age have a more youthful look. Now, what does a good skincare routine consist of? Number one, a amazing cleansing. If you're not washing your face, I don't know what to tell you. Go back to the drawing board. But yes, your cleansing routine. Amongst that, you wanna think about your acids, your AHAs, your BHAs, your options to really kind of exfoliate your skin. And then you wanna look at potentially retinols if you are not sensitive to them. I can't use retinols, my skin cannot handle it because I have eczema, but my skin loves using my acids. And of course, following up with a nice moisturizer, which contains
contains hyaluronic acid. There are so many brands and so many products. I will list my favorites in the description bar below. Along with my routine actually, and always following up with a good sunscreen. Yes, no matter your skin tone, you need sunscreen. And actually my advice for those of you in your 20s is do not forget about your eyes because they give away your aging the fastest. Carve out dedicated spaces in your home for your mental and your physical health. Because when I was in my 20s, early 20s, I didn't go to the gym. I didn't know about balance. I didn't know about fit. I didn't know about anything. I was just go, 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 go. Work, 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 work. Play, 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 play. Live, 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 live but I didn't know that I was actually on a trajectory of burnout. And actually living a thriving life is all about having balance and feeling a sense of full rounded wellness is about taking care of my physical and emotional health. And you can do that from home. You don't need to always see a personal trainer or go to a gym. And I know that in your 20s, maybe some of y'all can afford that. So creating spaces at home is going to be an essential thing. Whether it's the corner of your room or it's your living room, or if it's the back garden, finding space to work out is really important or move your body in a way that works for you at home is super important. Invest in experiences in your 20s for you know what? I'm not even going to tell people in their super early 20s to be investing money. And I know I'm the money girl. I be talking about it. I talk about save it, invest it and all that jazz. But the one thing I think is super important to do is invest in experiences and experiences that involve pushing you out of your comfort zone, because that is a way to generate knowledge, experience, connection that could be valuable for you financially in the long term. A hundred percent. Don't be squirreling everything away and never having any fun. Also, don't be crazy and spending all your money, but experiences I think are a valuable experience, are a valuable tool. When I was in my 20s, like when I just graduated university, I did that whole backpacking, I'm gonna go to a hostel, I'm gonna be in Singapore, Malaysia and Bali for um, like, I did like eight weeks away with a girlfriend. And on that trip, I was also kidnapped, but I also met amazing people and learned to defend myself and learned to be an independent individual, which I wasn't good at doing before. And every time I share my stories on those trips, or I have had a connection with someone who also stayed at the same place that I stayed at, or some of the friends that I made when I ended up in Singapore, those things have been valuable investments that have, I would say, paid dividends <laughs> in the long run into my 30s, because I still talk about it till now. So invest in experiences over material things. Cause actually I'll tell you something for free. There is nothing that I bought in my twenties that I really have till now that I'm like, Ooh, that thing I bought in my twenties besides my first ever Prada bag. In your twenties, you need to learn to take a breath, to take a beat before you make a rash decision because not every day just jump into things because you feel like it. I ended up in situations like being kidnapped that were dangerous because I was very rash and I did didn't ever have the terminology, wait, let me think about this. Wait, I'll get back to you on that. I often felt under pressure to respond straight away to things, to give my all to things straight away, to not kind of think about some kind of decision making process before I went into doing things. And I feel like if you feel like you're being rushed to do something, don't do it. Don't do it because you need time to think. And there's nothing wrong with taking time to deliberate your next move. Why would there be a problem with that? Some of us need time to adjust and work out what's best for us. And anybody who tells you that you can't is not the right person for you. So in your twenties, have it in your vocabulary to just take a breath and say, I'll think about it before saying yes or no to something that is coming your way.